Hello, good morning. Uh, here we are. As you can see from the mast behind me here, um, I've got the mast back in. Um, they're all rigged up. And uh, yeah, they're looking good now. It's the uh, second time I've had to do the repairs on this mast. Um, it rotted out. The collar had rubbed the collar of the uh, sail, so it rubbed around the base of the mast there. When we originally bought Tiare, she had varnished masts, which looked absolutely fantastic. Um, but being in the tropics with all the high UV, um, there were just too much maintenance. Like once a year, we really had to go out there, give them a light sand down, and then give them another varnish. After a couple of years of living on board, we discovered that the aft sail collar had worn through the covering of glass that protects the mast from hard knocks. This had allowed the tropical rains to run down the mast and into the wood. And it doesn't take long for the heat and humidity of the tropics to turn the wood to mush. The damage was bad enough that we really needed to pull the mast out and rebuild the first six feet. I also wanted to paint them white, so no more going up the mast to varnish and sand. We couldn't do this in Thailand due to visa limits, so we carefully sailed down to the moat in Malaysia. Once the masts were out, we also found that the masthead had rotted out. The bottom of the mast was rebuilt with wood, the masthead we replaced with aluminium. Once the work was done, we re-stepped and continued cruising. I pulled my two masts out yesterday. There they are there. Um, the reason is I need to give them a repaint. I also want to, um, the back mast is getting cracks in the, um, in the glass, um, which is an indication that uh, one of two things, one, it was rotting from the inside and swelling and cracking the glass and also that the glass wasn't probably uh, fixed down uh, properly to start with. And that one there. This is the forward mast. This was fine. They're both identical. Uh, they're 14 meters long from this point here all the way down to the end there. 14 meters. Um, there are no cracks in it. It's been well done. No problems with that. Uh, this mast here different story. I had to rebuild this mast, um, here we go, out of the sun. I had to rebuild this mast a couple of years ago, well, seven years ago now. Um, I didn't know much. After cruising for a while, we noticed that cracks started to appear in the aft mast, first on the paint and then the glass. Initially at the top, and then they seemed to work themselves further down. But we were cruising remote areas, well away from the resources need to either drop or lift out the mast. So we filled or covered the cracks the best we could, tried to stop any more water getting in, and kept an eye on them and hoped for the best. It had been 10 years since we bought her and had really done almost no major maintenance other than to keep her and us safe. Well last year we were finally in a position where I could give Tiara her much needed maintenance and overhaul, and finally crane the mast out and assess the damage, and perhaps have a good cry at what we found. And yeah, it wasn't pretty. It looked like the glass had not stuck to the wood, it just peeled off. Water had gotten underneath and rot had set in. Only this time the main damage was to the top 6 metres. The masthead, now being aluminium, had had no issues. The forward mast appeared fine. No cracks and I didn't want to jinx myself by disturbing what wasn't a problem. So the forward mast just got a cosmetic overhaul. New primer, new top paint, plus a fancy steaming light and deck light. The damage to the top 6 metres was fairly extensive. Luckily the mast is made using a bird's mouth construction technique and where the length of wood were glued together, the damage had not moved from one length to the next due to the glue between the two pieces of wood. I could save half the existing mast wood, but needed to replace the rotten lengths. But suitable spar wood is very expensive here in Japan, so I looked at the alternative, which is to replace the mast with aluminium. But thick walled aluminium of the right diameter is not cheap, and shipping it to me in Japan made it even less so. We simply couldn't afford either new wood and definitely not a new mast. The only option left was to use the same rot and insect resistant wood that I had bought for the office deck. This wood is Hinoki or Japanese Cypress. It's very rot resistant which sounded good to me. I also had enough lengths available to do the job. Finishing the office deck would just have to wait. Removing the damaged wood was scary. Hoping that the remaining wood would hold the weight and not break before I got the new wood back in. If that had happened, the whole job would have become seriously more difficult and my trust in the repair would have been undermined. I really didn't want to be in the rough seas wondering if the mast was going to break or not. I applied ethyl glycol or antifreeze 
to stop any further spread of dry rot or fungi. It also has the benefit of showing up areas where water had penetrated the mast. After selecting the lengths that had the least amount of knots in them, making the replacement strips was fairly straightforward. A simple calculation based on the diameter of the mast and the number of pieces. Tiara's mast has eight sections. I needed to replace four of them. The wood I had wasn't long enough for some, so they needed to be joined with a healthy 12 to 1 scarf. My youngest son was down for the holidays and helped out with the scarf ones. Like most dogs, Misso enjoys being part of the team. Once I had this done, I could cut out the bird's mouth. There was also some stiffness to make that fit inside the mast. I think in these you can see why it's called a bird's mouth joint. The joint increases the surface area of the glue bond. Once the rotten sections in the mast have been removed and the scarfs made, and the new wood cut and then scarfed to length, it's time to glue the new wood into place. Getting a close fit with the new wood to the old hadn't been easy. Seeing the epoxy squeeze out as I tightened the clamps up was a big relief, as it meant the joints were a good fit. Looping, then twisting the ropes around the mast really put pressure on the joints. I was surprised at how well this had worked. After that, it was waiting a couple of days for the epoxy to set before I could roll the mast around and start rounding off the new wood to match the circumference of the mast. Any low parts were made up with the epoxy filler. After the mast has been rounded, filled and sanded smooth, it was time to prep it for a layer of fiberglass. This is our oldest son Sam, who unlike me, is a boat builder and actually knows what he's doing. I was extremely grateful that Sam was able to provide the help and advice for this stage of the project. Once the glass is all on and cut to size, the peel ply is ripped off. Next is to add three coats of high build epoxy primer, sanded down to smooth finish. And then a final three coats of finished paint. Well, good morning. Today's my last um, day of uh, painting these masts. Um, it's a bit, bit of a milestone really. Um, I've been just going on and on these masks for a long time. So once I, it takes me an hour to put the coat of paint on, I've also got to put some uh, an anchor light up on there and a, uh, a steaming deck light down on there. Uh, but before that, I will check the cables to make sure the connections are still good. Um, but yeah, so there we go. A uh, rebuilt mast, newly painted. And this one's just been um, serviced with new paint and things. So, yeah, big moment. It's the big day. The crane's arrived, there's no wind, the tide's just right, and we've had a few days to let the paint harden before we put the strops around it. Everything's going to plan. I'm really pleased with the results, and more importantly, no longer worried about the mast falling apart. Another benefit is that I now have the confidence to build a completely new mast should I need to. It's not difficult, a new wooden mast really is a low-tech, simple step-by-step -step process. I feel a new build would have been easier than trying to do the repairs I did, but money constraints meant that a new mast was never on the cards. A decision had to be made about what to do with the existing standing rigging, whether I put the old wire rigging back on, make up some new wire rigging, or were there other options. Given that our budget is really, really tight, Perhaps just reusing the old rigging would be the only choice we have. 
but life constantly throws unexpected opportunities and a chance meeting with an Australian rigger provided the answers. But that story is for the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like. If you'd like to follow our journey as we get Tiawi ready to sail and then start exploring this amazing country by sea, please subscribe.